as we were discussing to establish from where did actually the process of printing start but before understanding this one we need to understand the history of china china the first book was printed in china later in japan from then it passed on to korea so china japan korea all are the eastern countries of asia they are geographically located on the eastern corner of asia for the first time from east the knowledge passed on to west yes it got blended with the technology and returned back again maybe it is a good understanding but the basic knowledge always started from the east in regarding to the printing so in 594 ad the first books which were printed were printed in china and later they were also printing on the rubber paper which was a thick paper because china people have more amount of rubber crop available for them so as per their requirements and as per the availability of the resources they were easily able to produce more number of books or volumes of writing volumes so why did i mention it as a writing volumes not as a printed books because during that period the printing machine was different when it compared to our modern printing machine so they used to make the wooden blocks which are been inked after the wooden blocks are inked then they were made to copy that one so as the pages are very thin they used to make the pages to fold and bind it on the other edge that is accordion book the accordion book is a book which has the compilation of all the written pages and tied or printed or bounded on the other side like how do we do this binding of the modern days in that way it has been tied on one side which allows to get a look of a book that's how the printing started and during those period we have excellent calligraphers the calligraphers are the people who have a stylish and a very beautiful handwriting they used to copy exactly how does it look from one page to the other page that's how the writing got transformed into various number of volumes and then it got on to move on to the west but in china why is printing very famous in china what is the necessity for china to print or to have the written records of all these things in china way back itself in the 8th century itself they had the habit of recruiting bureaucrats through written examinations that is a basic fundamental necessity for what china people required the printing knowledge so the printing material served for them to recruit huge bureaucratic system so the bureaucratic system has been recruited through the civil services examination which is in india also we have the civil services examination what we have after we got independence a union public service commission board was set up in order to recruit efficient and complement or the people those who can look at the issues so in the process of recruiting the able and the efficient administrative officers or the bureaucrats even in india we have the civil services examinations which are considered as the top most examinations in india so availing or attempting for civil services is also been considered as a credit or as a privilege opportunity for most of the indians but now as we are discussing about the chinese recruitment policy china people have followed this one way back before us though it may not be so tough as we are following today but the civil services examination was considered as a high quality examination during that period because in china they need more number of bureaucrats in order to run their administration so in this process they would always like to have a good consistent examination by having a printed paper for that that's how the necessity for having a printed paper examination has generated in china due to this one that is the reason why we have the printing more officially developed in china though it has been done by calligraphers or on the wooden blocks or on the rubber sheets printing has been encouraged on a very large scale by the own imperialistic state means the own government that is the reason why printing has been focused more in china rather than in other parts of the world so the later on after the imperialists started to use it for the state services or the civil services the merchants started to use for their day to day business activities and the reading habit has been generated 
to almost all the people especially for the rich women who are staying at the houses who are the wives of the higher officials used to write and these books were also been again published and that's how the poetry the prose the narratives the autobiographies all these they started to spread from one corner to the other corner so now from the west how did the people come to know about the east so from west the british officials established their outpost in shanghai so from there the knowledge started to cross across from east to west and again from west to east so once the knowledge crossed from east to west why did it come back again to west the knowledge which was in china was a bit in the unused technology where the technology has not been blended into the printing process they are using it in the old traditional method so when it went on to the britishers towards the west there they added up with the technology and brought back again the modern machines so now in china earlier before we have the hand printing machines but now we have the mechanical printing machines which are been substituted by the earlier hand machines or the wooden block machines that's how it can be traced that first printing has been initiated in china they need printing machines because they need to understand or they need to conduct the recruitment process which was done on a huge basis to recruit their bureaucratic system so the civil service examination were conducted during that period only maybe around some 8th to 12th century bc we have the historians remarking that china people used to conduct the recruitment service examination or civil service examination in order to recruit bureaucrats so as the time passed on the king sponsored this one or the imperial state sponsored for the printing machines the conduction of the examinations and all these things the merchants started to maintain their daily records on the printing basis so in order to establish the requirement and necessity or fulfilling the needs the civil servants recruitment and all these things were encouraged by the britishers and as the time passed on the merchants started to use their day to day basis activities everything on record and later on the reading habits has been initiated and with the reading habit looking at the understandings people started to produce their own inner voices by most of the women so women who are from the official backgrounds who are the wives of the officials who are coming from very rich communities they used to start writing and then they also wrote many of their biographies and all these things initiated the process of understanding how the writing has spread in china but this has got an extreme phase of it after it got blended with the western knowledge that blending happened when the western people set up their outpost in shanghai whereas earlier we used to have hand printing done in china but with the adding of the knowledge from the west at shanghai outpost where initially they got the knowledge of printing from the east later it got into the west again it came back with the blend of the technology and they got the machine printing added on for that so that's how the knowledge got added and enhanced from hand printing to machine printing now let us try to understand how did the printing move on to japan as we discussed earlier the necessity for the growth of printing in china the recruitment process hiring of the officials all these things initiated the process of recruiting and in china but now because of the journey of the buddhist monasteries or the buddhist missionaries from china to japan this brought the knowledge of printing from china to japan so the journey the knowledge of printing started from china and reached to japan from 768 to 770 period during that period there were japanese people who are following buddhism so most of the buddhist gurus or the monasteries who came from there they have brought the knowledge and they started to spread it in japan so by 868 ad we started to have a buddhist diamond sutra book the book printed with the diamond sutra named buddhist diamond sutra where it has six sheets the six sheets are very thick and they also have some images printed on the cloth visual images are printed on the cloths so all these things have brought the knowledge of printing towards japan 
after they came in japan from the 8th century ad to 9th century ad later on when we enter into the medieval period phase in japan in the medieval period many of the people started to write the poets and the prose started to flourish in japan and the books are available at very very less cost and available in various of variants so that's how the books are available at very cheap and available in large in number that's made the japanese people to get access to more number of books literature and the books are not written only in one particular aspect it was written in poetry it was written in prose it was written in autobiographies it was written as a feelings of them it has written as the narrative stories and later they started to write books on the play games books on the cooking attitude books on the playing music so all these things whatever they know they used to compile a book and these books are sold lively in the market so that's how they got huge market and libraries are been set up and this printing started to turn a new phase when it was linked with the visual materials when we can see the images only that started to look very very attractive and impressive so that impressive nature and attractive nature has got for the printing on that particular day so that's how we got this one so this visual images made the urban circles also to come into the picture of printing scene so edo the city of edo has been the most important urban center from where the printing has been started so the urban center edo is the modern day city tokyo so in tokyo we used to have the urban center printings and almost all the books are sold in various places wherever they get any new information on printing they used to discuss at the tea house gatherings libraries and all in the book stores that's how it went on to a very large scale so from china it reached to japan so from japan how did it reach to the west and how did the modern technology of printing has come up now we shall see how did the europeans get the knowledge of printing so as we all know that the europeans have been trading with the east from many centuries before the modern period so it was also famously known as silk route the route through which the silk has been transported from china to the west via through crossing through india and all the countries so the same silk route has paved the way for the pass of the knowledge in regards to printing in the 11th century where the knowledge has been passed back by a traveler who came to china to understand them the manuscripts which were written during that time were written in india and these were very shabby and very difficult to carry and when it comes to the people those are writing there there they used to write by scribes scribes means something which we call it as uh, professional writers they are trained who write very beautifully with their hands so they used to have people who used to copy the data but it was a very good art of calligraphy this calligraphy was continued in the west in 1295 ad marco polo italian traveler who came to china after wandering at various places then he moved on back to italy where he took the knowledge of wooden blocks these wooden blocks knowledge has been taken by marco polo so the process of transforming knowledge towards europe from the east was on a larger scale taken by marco polo marco polo was the first man from the east who took the knowledge towards the west generally we find people taking a material or men for work or for any other business purposes but for the first time the knowledge has been traveling from the east towards the west generally the route was in the vice versa it was in the reverse route the knowledge travels from the west to the east here in during this period it was a remarkable change which happened with the intention of marco polo taking up the knowledge of the east printing knowledge towards the west that's how the wooden blocks were been initiated knowledge has been exposed to the europeans so generally in europe we have a custom of writing the books where most of the people are fond of having the books written so as i told you before the scribes the scribes are the people 
who used to translate the books or who used to engrave their handwritings very beautifully and give the written books for them but now when it comes to the manuscripts or any other scripts as i told you the books were not so neat because the page was either with the rubber or with the shabby part with the grass layers and all so it was very difficult for us to look at the paper or to catch the paper it was not so neat as you think the paper today is so soft and so elegant to look it was completely different so for the rich people to have they used to have a paper which is made with animal skin that is known as vellum the vellum was the paper which was used to write for the books which are read by the luxury people rich people or higher aristocrat community people these special pages were used by the scribes to write on the books and these books are being given to the rich people or most of the times it has been maintained by those people but later as the time passed on and the demand for the books the reading the reading habit has been inculcated in all corners of italy so the demand started to increase day by day so the book sellers earlier these scribes were maintained by rich people or aristocrats or the officials who are working in the kingdom under the king but later because of the growing demand need and necessity the book sellers also start to maintain at least 50 scribes and each one because of the growing demand this clearly shows for us that the reading has going on reaching to various corners of europe people started to read in a very large scale that's the major point what we are learning to understand now after having this much of growth of the reading habit the demand automatically went up when the demand automatically grew up this led to a massive upcoming of the changes because when automatically the demand is being shown and the hand written things cannot contemplate or cannot suffice the demand you apply 50 people 100 people the production may be doubled but the demand is four four times five four times increasing so it is very difficult to get that understand so that's how they decided to go for some quick necessity for them has been initiated because of the growing demand so this clearly shows for us that something we need which can do quick work at the same time at very cheap cost or at very less cost so we need something that has to be done at very quick very fast and at very less cost so that's how the need for the machinery has been triggered with the growing demand in the europe so now let us now move on to the finding out of the printing press it actually we all know that printing press was invented by john gutenberg in 1453 but before understanding about this who is john gutenberg john gutenberg lives in strasbourg of germany where his father was a merchant and he used to live in a very large estate so being a son of a merchant and living in a large estate he got exposed to olive and wine fields when we own an olive and a wine fields the oil seeds and the wine seeds are been pressed to get the juice and the oils so that's how we got the knowledge of pressing that pressing molds he got to acquire the knowledge later he acquired the knowledge of goldsmith how to make the molds to be very shiny and very smooth so that that pressing would get the 100% benefit from the seeds of wine or the olive seeds so that's how he learned the knowledge of making the molds so he started to make the lead molds so once he started to have the idea of the lead molds he started to make all the molds of the alphabets with the lead and start to make the printing this idea slowly slowly developed and in 1448 he was able to make it perfect printing machine so the first book printed was as you all know now we shall discuss about the print revolution and the impact how did the print revolution started to impact the entire society so 
how did the culture of reading established we have seen one phase how did the people started to understand the reading how did they develop the fascination towards the reading habit but it was not on a very large scale so in the initial years it was very difficult for the people or the publishers to understand the pulse of the people so the first stage the new reading public we need a public who can understand the reading where even though in england or in any of the european countries most of the people are illiterates who doesn't know how to read and how to write so how can we expect people to buy a book and write though the cost of the printing has come down the labor used for printing has literally come down and there is also a possibility of printing more number of books all these things made an opportunity for the publishers to get huge number of books in place but now how to get them connected to the people because ultimately if people are not buying that would not get the result for the publishers so in order to get the best result of the books and make a better use of the market of the printing machines which were developed so they decided to have a new understanding and to create awareness for the people we cannot create awareness for the people saying that you come and read this book because people don't know how to read and generally during those days wherever people used to read a person if a person knows reading and writing they used to gather at a place and discuss the stories like the sacred books the ballads or the fox tale folk tale stories and all these things so when we talk about the sacred books like we have the bible readings we have the buddhist monk readings all these readings come under the category of sacred texts and when you talk about the ballads the ballads are the historic collection which were transferred from one generation to another generation on a face of oral stories so then uh, folk tale stories all these things are the oral correction of the people so here we need to understand that the stories or the knowledge of during that period was based on the oral transformation of the knowledge so most of the people are restricting themselves towards the oral understanding of the subject or the knowledge so now in order to get the knowledge of written culture it is very difficult to make all the people to go to the schools and learn the literature and come so how can we project literature to the uneducated people now that is a real difficult task this task has been overcome by the publishers by having a clear picture of what are the requirements of the large number of people so how can the recipe or how can you get the mass public into the reading community so first of all the identified facts are that people are interested to listen to the ballads to look at the ballads to watch a show on ballad so if ballads are being published which are well connected to the people and which are read by the people then it would be a good market that was the initial phase of thought which was brought to transform the people from the illiterate uneducated people who are not at all interested in reading to the reading category of people because earlier reading was restricted only to the higher community people or the elite community people or the aristocratic family people or the noble people but now we need to connect to the common people because the availability of books has become very easy and this advantage cannot become an advantage until and unless it has been utilized for a large number of community people so that has to be the main focus for all of us so the publishers started to think what are the possible ways they started to explore the ways to get reach to the people so initially they understood ballads have to be printed the uh, sacred text have to be printed later they also understood that only printing does not fetch much results so we need to plan for them a beautiful pictures so that they can understand it visually also not only reading they can understand it visually and then they can visualize that one and get the final understanding that's how they decided to do the necessary things then for the first time the books are been printed the ballads are been printed and a large community of people have brought together this large community of people have been brought together and they started to discuss these all the things at the taverns 
are the place where the tavern is a place where they gather for a drinking purpose for a community association or for the exchange of the political developments or any news or any function any friends gathering so place where tavern happens there they start to read the books and discuss with each other in a loud and a detailed manner as we discussed earlier also the loud and discussion was been a precise exercise exhibited during by the old person in the community during that period where all the others used to sit and listen to them so ballads were something which has been memorized and they are been passed from generations to generations so when ballads are been printed with the visual images that started to attract the large number of people towards this one this large attraction of people from the unreading community towards the reading community disturbed the line of the literates and the illiterates the readers and the non readers that finally blurred the line of gap between the reading people and the non reading people so that's how reading got a new public into hand by getting the sacred texts and the ballads but not only this after printing has developed many people started to get their ideas printed very soon at very less cost this has also initiated some reformation movements do you believe that yes by printing a book a leader has emerged because earlier going to people discussing with people and getting their opinions was a very long process and a time taking process but now you can print anything at very less cost or the affordable cost by you and then publish it so that it can trigger into the brains of the people and then they can discuss about the ideology and then they can finalize which way they have to go what is the right path what is the wrong path all these things can be discussed and analyzed but there are people also who got scared and who were afraid of to have a check on the printing because if the radical ideas are been printed and these are been spread to all the corners that would become very difficult to control the issues that's what the other side of the coin towards the printing advantages now let us see one example martin luther king in 1517 wrote a book asking the atrocities or questioning the faith of roman catholic mission which was actually printed on wolbrick church on the walls of the wolbrick church which the people who came to church start to read this one and initiated to have a discussion on this in the church where church has been answered to come out and answer certain questions where the questions are been put across the church authorities so when this started there were various number of volumes which are written by martin luther king spread very soon when he translated the new testament within a span of less than one month he wrote 500 5000 copies were sold that shows the printing's affordability and even martin luther king in his own words thanked that printing has been the greatest gift of the god in order to make the ideas spread to each and every corner in a very fast and a precise detailed manner that's what he mentioned in his own book the first copy within less than 3 months was sold for 5000 copies and then again he wrote a second one which again got a massive production offer so that's how martin luther king started to express his views he wrote nearly 95 volumes in his 95 volumes he expressed the various views which are connecting to the people and he questioned various kind of unnatural habits practiced by the church authorities which finally resulted by the understanding of the people triggered the anger of the people and it finally assumed in the split of the church the church has been got divided into protestants and the catholics the martin luther king turning up to be the leader of the protestant community so that's how printing has also initiated a very large massive reformation movement and it was also very successful only and only because of the efforts of the printing because if printing was not there martin luther and king would not have been reached to many people so martin luther has been able to connect to various millions of people is only because of the printing press that's the reason why 
he thanked the god and praising that printing press has been the greatest gift given by the god to the mankind and next when we move on to the next other side of the coin as i expressed before that there are not only positive points there are always some negative implications also when we look at the case of menaco chio so menaco hio or menaco chio is living in italy who was basically a miller who initially started to study new testament which was written by the english people so when he started to study the new testament he started to understand the new testament very literally so when during that time in his society he was able to find some people like inquisition and heretical inquisition is something who are identified as the people those who are standing against the will and the interests of the gods who will identify the people who are standing against the will and interest against the god it is the church authorities who identify the people who are not following the church principles and policies who are against that one and these people are termed as heretical so the inquisition and heretical is a punishments which are given to them so when these are identified he started to translate the new testament because the basis for the formation of this inquisitions and all are from the new testament so he translated the new testament according to his understanding which spread to various other people all people started to understand what actually bible meant then the church authorities got very much angry on meno menokio and menokio was been two times warned uphold it and seriously warned that do not issue these kind of publications which are being a threat for the authority of the church but still he continued finally he was been killed by the church authorities as a punishment who rose his voice against the will of the god that's how his story has come to an end this is an other side of the same printing press story where one side it was been a very successful one very large in connectivity towards the people where in martin luther case it was reformation movement which happened here it was cost of the execution of the life of menokio and after this our roman catholic mission maintained books which are prohibited for reading from 1558 which reveals for us that there are certain books which are against the church principles so they decided to have a ban on all these books so that's how we got the printing revolution and its impact initially it got new public for us later we got the sacred reformation movement and one in italy which resulted in the execution of menokio so that's what resulted in the prohibition of a list of books by the roman catholic mission or rcm churches by the authority in 1558 now the reading mania we have discussed how did the printing started to get connected to various people how the ideology started to spread with the case of martin luther king and also in the example of italian miller writing the book and penalized for commenting against the church and later on the further developments have led to the having a list of books banned by the church authorities all over the world by 1558 now understanding of the print mania let us see here so before this we used to have a books written by the people only to the richer community or the elite group later on they start to spread to the various corners and now the people started to maintain the almanacs the almanacs are the maintenance of the entire record for the entire whole year where it's like a calendar in which the entire list of the activities festivals important dates important occasions everything are been maintained that started to publish in a very large scale books started to publish in a very large scale ballads are been printed in a very large scale and published and later on we have the many other small small books also known as the chap books the books which are available at very very less cost the chap books are sold by the chap sellers who used to sell it for a single penny the chap books are the books which are made with a very low quality of book which is been sold 
on to everybody with a single penny which means that it can be reached to common man also that's how the reading culture the writing culture started to spread to the all corners of the european continent and later if we discuss the other famous book in france it was the belitiku bilu belitiku bilu is also a book which was of low paper quality and thin sheets having binded on that with the blue color sheets which is also been sold at very less cost to all the people available so that it can be reaching to the various corners of the france where everybody can learn can get connected towards the knowledge that's how the reading habit the culture the understanding the writing the discussion started to develop after the sudden phase started people started to acquire newspapers the news magazines the political magazines all these things started to initiate the process of reading the news into the public so the news the updates in the political scenario and also the updates in the sports fields in the scientific fields in the investigation fields on the church developments on the movements against the church developments the different uh, denominations of the church also the dominions started to publish their own books the translation of the church the new testament into various parts led to the awareness of the people to get them flooded with the various ways of knowledge that's how the knowledge started to spread on and now when we already discussed about the news in that the most important category was the scientists the scientists especially isaac newton's writings were being published in a very large scale so that it initiated the people those who are having that scientific fever can understand what is actually happening what are the latest developments that he is planning what he is discussing about the gravitation what are the laws that he has brought what are his basic principles what is the reaction of every action against other reactions newton's third law of motion so all these things were discussed widely deliberately discussed debated and understanding has been developed in such a way not only newton but also rousey's views john jacobs rousey the separatist the awakening thoughts have been imbibed by him he brought into knowledge that we need to question the all blind superstitious beliefs and think rationally and question the authorities who are force us to do certain things what is the necessity for somebody to force us to follow the superstitions so all these things brought the people to understand the knowledge of news scientific and the philosophers all these things start to come into the hands of the people and later as it was rightly remarked by mercier's mercier's remarked that saying that tremble therefore the tyrants of the world according to him the most powerful person in this world is a person who can write with his pen it's not the person who is holding the sword in his hand and who is ruling the kingdom even the kingdom can be collapsed if a writer puts his views against that if he questions any kind of atrocities which are made by the king so that's how he brought into understanding the people that what is the reach of writing what is the importance of writing so mckenna rightly brought its view because when we took out the example of martin luther who raised his voice against the church church is not a kingdom which is restricted to a particular country he raised his voice in italy it reached to entire england and it reached to the entire europe so it was rightly remarked by mercier's when he is saying that entire world should will shake if we write and if it is published so the printing has brought the reach of the ideas crossing vertically and horizontally all the boundaries of the countries continents even crossing on the greater alps greater mountain ranges to the various other corners and now people are no more unaware of the facts or the scientific developments or the latest news political developments rational thinking scientific thinking so all these things were brought into the understanding of the people were at the reach of the hands of the people so that's how the developments happened in regards to the development of print reading media and now when we take about the question like ask fun what about the french revolution is really printing accountable for french revolution is really the printing has brought the french revolution yes 
it has been put into three major discussion points the first major point is in answering this question when it comes to the french revolution the french revolution was not triggered by the printing media it has brought the people the right understanding of what is happening during that time that is the critical thinking has been initiated because of the writing of the books of rousey and the questioning of the atrocities the questioning of the blind superstitious beliefs which are been followed by the kings by the nobles during that period a rational thinking has been brought into the brains of the people by the views of rousey by the views of the thomas more these all people brought the equitable society the will of the people is more important these all ideologies have been brought into the knowledge of the people by getting the printing more famous so critical thinking has been brought into the lines of the people's brains and the next fundamental major change which has been brought was after the books are been printed the books are who can read it who can understand it started to discuss and have a dialogue on it and after having a dialogue and understanding the books thoroughly then they started to spread this message by having debates at the public places at the taverns at the public gatherings tea point gatherings and all these things so the second point has given the chance to have a dialogue and a debate on what it is a book that has been published what is the thinking that has been stressed on by the thinkers what are the new scientific developments all these things started to give a process of dialogue and debate and moving on to the third one the outpouring of the literature during this time it's not only the ideas of newton it's not only the ideas of voltaire it's not only the ideas of rousey it's not only the ideas of thomas more it is ideas were spreading in a very large manner the different dominions of the church brought into light the different views of the church when different views of the church are brought then they start to question the authority of the churches then they start to question the authority of the people and the nobles it also brought the most luxurious lives led by the kings and the most substantial evidences of the monarchies behaving more selfishly rather than being more caring towards the people so all these outpouring knowledge which was brought nearby to the people and into the brains of the people yes may be triggered from half of the point but not completely that it has triggered the french revolution in this process we will just have a brief recap of this see here the reading mania has brought the development of various church dominions publishing the uh, new testament which is reachable to all people by breaking it into small small parts and making it into different convenient number of small small pages at available at very less cost so that it can be reachable to many number of people and also maintaining the entire record of the year old activities like the almanacs and later this to reach the common people to have their own small records they started to publish the chap books after the chap books were been invented in france especially we have balithio q blue these are also the small small books affordable to the common man so the news which has been spreading into the people because the news magazines were also been published the regular magazines has been published the scientific developments which are invented by sir isaac newton were been published to the common man's reach where it created a favor for the people those are having a passion to understand the scientific nature and also the philosophy which are the philosophers like voltaire rousey and locke john locke all these people started to publish their books people started to read them and understand the different thoughts the rational thinking the blind beliefs are been questioned bilaterally without having any compromise on that so all these things were been brought to understanding of the people so the scientific and the philosopher books also read into the people and as it was rightly remarked by mercier that tremble therefore the tyrant of the world the most powerful person in this world is the person who can write but not the person who can hold a sword and control the people by being an emperor even the emperor can tremble if a person writes a book and that book gets published it can be a rightly example or exemplified by taking an example of martin luther who wrote completely against the church authorities which were more powerful than a king 
where they were established in the entire corner of Europe and where he raised his voice resulting in the reformation movement. So all these things reveals for us that the most powerful one is the printing and the writing. So this has been concluded as the effect of reading mania. But there are many questions which are raised in connection with the French Revolution. How far is printing connected with the triggering of French Revolution? We may not say it is 100% correct to say that critical thinking or dialogue debate and outpouring of the literature were the three major angles or perceptions which can be viewed when it comes to the French Revolution. With the writing of the books, with the getting of the knowledge to the people, that has triggered the critical thinking in the minds of the people. The critical thinking will always bring in the knowledge of the people to understand clearly whether it is right or not, whether it is applicable or not, whether it is a true fact or just a cooked story. So all these things can be understood very well using this critical thinking, understanding which was brought by reading various books. And next, the dialogue and the debate. Once the books are written and released, the people those who can understand these books read them and then they concluded and consolidated their statements. Afterwards, they brought them in discussion with the people to make them to understand what are the growing thoughts around the world. After having this dialogue and also getting more amount of books and knowledge about the biographies of the kings, about the activities of the kings, about the acts of the queens, about the issues of the personal affairs, about the reasons for going wars by the authorities or especially the by monarchies. All these things brought in the understanding that monarchy is having almost always the selfish attributes, not having any kind of public inclination at all. So these all things may also be the hidden reasons for having the French Revolution triggered on a very larger scale. Now, in order to conclude, it would be right to say that people did not only read the books which are written by the scientific experts like Newton or the uh, philosophers like Rousey, Moore, Thomas Locke and all these people, but they also have read the books which are being published by the church authorities and also by the other people. So, people always listen, heard, read everything which are been published. They have always taken whatever they feel that is good and rejected whichever is not in reality. But it has to be underlined that people's thinking or people's thought process has been changed and the minds have been kicked off to open because of the outpour of the knowledge which has come up be behind having the printing machine on a larger scale. If printing machine was not developed, this kind of transformation, this kind of passing on of the information would not have been possible. Now, till now we have discussed like how did the writing develop? How did the printing concept has been initially found in China? What are the basic reasons for the Chinese people to focus so much on printing? As we all know that they used to conduct examinations like civil services in order to recruit high number of bureaucrats into their administration. Later on, this information and technology passed on to the West through the famous Silk Route where initially we used to have only Silk Route happening from there. Later now, the knowledge of the Western block printing or the wooden block printing passed on towards the West into Italy by the Italian traveler Marco Polo in 1295 AD. After the knowledge has been passed to this side, then they brought the understanding on a very larger scale. After this triggered, we have seen how the knowledge went on to Japan, then to the other corners and later how John Gutenberg discovered a machine which can print the letters very fast by printing Bible of 180 copies in just a span of three years created a remarkable history. After this, the printing has become very easy at very less and affordable cost to all people. Later, this has poured the entire knowledge of people. Initially in the 15th century, there were only 20 million books. Later on, the number has been increased by the 16th century to 200 million books. With this, the flooding of books 
in the european market has brought us to understand how fascinated the people are towards the knowledge and understanding it was not so easy for the publishers to make it connected to the common people because most of the people are uneducated people but by bringing ballads by bringing the folk tale stories and bringing the calendars and making them to visualize by the pictures all these things made the people to get well connected and they turned into the non readers into a reader community the gap has been reduced by getting the new public into existence or into the reading community after this we have various other turns when it comes to the reading mania where the reading mania has been brought many other changes and before this we also have seen how printing has brought the revolutions in this phase that's how the developments have been triggered and it clearly shows for us that only the reading or the books did not change the mindset of the people it is the thought process which has been changed it initiated to discuss scientifically logically and questioning undoubtedly any superstitious or blind beliefs and asking seriously what is a divine right theory without any doubts so that's how the knowledge has helped the people to have modern understanding and it may be one of the reasons for the growth or the revolt of french revolution now we shall discuss about the developments which happened in the 19th century the major developments which happened in the 19th century we played a remarkable role in the development of printing reaching to the people let us now focus segment wise prior it got the electronic devices fixed with the technology and make printing available to a larger sections but before this also we have connectivity of the reading habit towards the people as in the previous chapter or the previous part of the lesson we have discussed that the lessons are being taught for the people by bringing the magazines by getting the folk tales and all these things but with the major developments like in the 18th century the reading habit has reached to vast leaps in england and in europe so what are the major factors that led for the wide range reach of reading that's the major thing or the major people who were the pivotal role in increasing its importance were children women and workers the children became a part of the main reading community women who used to be a part of the household work also started to spend their valuable time after they finish all the household activities towards reading and then the workers in order to improve their self skills in order to understand themselves they also started to work according to the interest and schedule some amount of time after their work is done towards their development so let us see them in detail now first one children as per the school laws which were based on the education primary education has been made compulsory to all the children of uk so when primary education has been made mandatory and compulsory to all of them and that was the free of the cost all people are engaged especially children are brought to schools when children are brought to schools we need for them the textbooks the notebooks so the textbook printing of the textbooks may reaching it to the large number of the crowd lakhs and thousands of books are being sold towards the schools and as a part of the textbook material and later we have the notebooks coming up where the whole along the year we have the notebooks coming up so in france a literature machine has been press has been dedicated only for the development of the children's texts so that's how the children's reading habit has started to be inculcated so they made a serious study on how to gather more number of children towards education and towards the reading habit with the developments in the innovations or with the required developments in printing a new innovation started to step in the further innovations like new methods of printing new way of printing new machines of printing technology implementation or technology coming together with the printing all these things added on for the growth of printing as well as for the reading culture of the people so now it has been a crucial task by the publishers 
to utilize the technology and with the growing technology the sales also has to be increased when there is a requirement to increase the sales the publishers started to find out the new innovative methods in order to bring large number of reading audience into the picture so let us see what are the major developments that have brought this kind of modern increasing of the sector in innovations the series of innovations have flooded in printing the series of innovations started to flood in printing so when the printing has been initially started by john gutenberg in 1453 he started to make with the wooden blocks later simplified them and started to make printing in a slow and steady manner as the time passed on folk tales have been collected all the other aspects have been made to get children women and the workers through the lending libraries and make them all come under the category of reading sector now after these all people have come in reading habit has been slowly inculcated in almost all sections of people in order to understand the existing society and also to develop them professionally the system started to understand the reading as a large reachable to the people now the fundamental point is technology implementation richard m hoy of new york discovered a cylindrical press the cylindrical press is a press which can print nearly 8000 papers per hour so 8000 papers per hour is printing a great revolution in the printing sector till that time they used to print books at very less cost but now they can print the books on a very larger scale mostly this is useful for newspapers so with the invention of this new machine called cylindrical press which was invented by richard h hoy so this man has created a new wonder by bringing more printing possible getting with 8000 papers or pages per hour this is largely useful for printing newspapers so with this we need some more audience who can read daily newspapers so that's how the technology started to get impressed and after this the possibility of printing more pages has become true then the electrically operated press till that time they were operating using some mechanism but now with the use of electricity the operation systems have become further more fast so with all these developments and the other developments the new things have to be come up and now printing has become very easy and very less cost with the implementation of the technology now the basic tough question is the publishers need more number of readers coming into their category because only if we have more amount of margin of market then only you can print in large number and sell it to larger crowd so the publishers used to find out new strategies in order to get more number of people into the reading arena so in order to get more number of people the new strategies are initiated by the publishers and the new strategies are like the periodical serials which are being printed every week and then it has to be done every week as a continuous process to be read by the people those who are reading especially the women the children the interesting stories were brought out and the fantastic illusionistic stories were given chances to be printed and uh, this periodical serialized books are been a major attraction during the early part of the 20th century by 1920s england popular books are being sold with the cheap quality of paper by shilling series named as shilling series these are sold at very less cost and the quality of the paper was not durable at all so this book may be sold at very less cost so that initially people get the habituated of reading that particular books then they would further buy more books that's how in 1920s england started to release the shilling series because the cost should not be more though printing is available at very less cost the cost of the paper should not be affecting the publishers and at the same time in 1930s we have the great economic depression coming and attacking the entire world so once the great economic depression started to come in attack the entire world 
they could not do anything so they started to reduce that cost by bringing the cheap quality paper into existence and replacing it for all the purposes like newspapers books textbooks notebooks everything so that the major loss can be compensated using this cheap quality of paper that's how the major developments also added for further reachable to more number of people new advancements new thinking new thoughts by the publishers to get more number of people as readers and then in order to compensate the loss which was caused during the great economic depression the cheap quality of paper has been brought into existence india and the world of printing what about india till now we discussed about the developments that are happening in europe specifically in london or in england now what happened to india what was the printing developments in india what were the first books that are printed who brought the printing to india how was the printing process developed in india what were the books that were written or what how did the indians used to write prior to get the knowledge of printing i think many of you know this point that manuscripts the manuscripts were the hand written scripts which were made on the palm leaves or on less quality of paper which were the earlier available editions of writing written documents for us so the manuscripts or the hand written scripts which are actually made on the palm leaves which are not so wealthy or like it's very costly to buy them at the same time they are very fragile very very delicate to handle them so that's how it could not be reached to more number of people if you see that the manuscripts are written in languages like sanskrit arabic and persian languages and also in the vernacular languages so none of the books are written in english language that's very clear for us why i stressed on english language means india doesn't have the knowledge of english till that time so it was only with the arrival of the britishers the necessity to learn and the understand english was been created by the britishers to the indians so indian languages are sanskrit arabic and persian and the other vernacular languages where manu has written his scripts called manuscripts and these are really very expensive and very delicate to handle that's the reason why they are known as fragile and once during this period the other major understanding or development which we feel like it's a shocking is that though india has been colonized or before the colonization pre colonial period bengal the bengal region has developed a network of schools these network of schools were the initial process of developments and the other interesting side of the schools is that they do not have any printed textbooks the textbooks are not at all available for them the teachers used to dictate for the learners what they have to learn and teach students used to write copy them and then memorize them and in the same way they would finish their schooling so in their whole process of schooling they never knew any book named as textbook that is really a very fantastic point and most of the literates of bengal are the people who never know what is a textbook that's a f- astonishing fact to know about the indian culture in the past so the manuscripts are the oldest written available sources for us they are written on the palm leaves they are written in the languages like sanskrit arabic and persian they on the other vernacular languages it was very expensive and they are very fragile very delicate to handle in the pre colonial period itself bengal has developed a series of schools the primary schools in these primary schools the network of the schools there were no textbooks available but without even having textbooks the teachers used to dictate for the learners and the learners used to copy them and memorize them and write the examinations and that's how most of the literate community of the bengal in the earlier period don't know what is a textbook but they were literates they finished their schooling without seeing any textbook now print print entering into india who brought the first print to india the first print was brought by the goa the portuguese missionaries we all know that 
Goa is a place where it has been occupied for a very long time by the Portuguese. Even today we have the Portuguese culture more widely spread in Goa. So Goa has been a place which has a remarkable place in the history by getting the Portuguese missionaries bringing the printing for us. So the print was initially brought by the Portuguese into the Indian land that is in Goa. After we got the print, then in this Portuguese missionaries, the most valuable people or the priests who came are the Jesuits. The Jesuits are the people who are from the followers of Ignatius Loyola who want who established this uh, Jesuit group in order to rebuild faith in the Catholic Church or on the Catholic Church. So Jesuits came to Konkan where they learned the Konkan language. After learning the Konkan language, they collected several tracts in Konkan language and they started to print those books. So that's how the books are printed in the Konkan language and the printing started in Goa for the first time in 1674. 50 books are printed in Konkan and Kanara languages. Konkani language and Kanara language, the books started to be printed. The next major development what we have is the Catholic priests started to make their valuable contributions in Tamil Nadu, the other side. According to the sources available for us, the first Tamil book was printed by the Catholic priest in 1579. The first Tamil book was printed by the Catholics priests in 1579. And the next, in 1713, we have the Malayalam first book being printed by the priests. So the priests and the missionaries are being a valuable contributors to get the printing developed in India. And in order to understand more clearly, in 1710, 32 books were printed in Tamil by the Dutch people's contribution. So it's not only the Portuguese people, it's not only the Catholic priests, it is the Dutch people also have contributed for the growth of printing in India. And later, in 1780, James Augustus, who started to work as the main member of the Bengal Gazette, this man was actually writing a newspaper or editing a magazine which was open to all and free from any kind of pressures. So in his writings, he used to write all the stories about how is the slave trade going on, how are the atrocities going on in India and also he used to publish all the gossips that are being centered around the officials of the company, British English East India Company. So with his writing this on a closer view, the then Governor General Warren Hastings warned Hickey and developed the newspaper pattern system which is favoring towards the company officials. So he started to make a counter one and he started to put the censorship on the news printings. That's how we started to get two newspapers into existence. One of the most major contribution by the Indians is that Indian newspaper is Bengal Gazette which was actually brought into existence by Gangadhar Bhattacharya who is a very close friend of uh, Raja Ramohan Rai. That's how we got the first Indian magazine being printed that too raising the voice against the Britishers without taking any kind of pressure or without being sufficed by any kind of pressures put by the British officials. So that's how the printing got developed in India. So the print first it came to Goa in Goa, it was brought by the Portuguese missionaries. After it was brought by the Portuguese missionaries, then printing has been a major activity in the west coast as well as on the eastern coast. On the west coast, starting with Goa, the Jesuit groups of brothers or the Catholic priests started to contribute by learning Konkan. After they learned Konkan, they learned the several tracts of Konkan and they nearly published 50 books. By 1674, in Konkani and Kanara language. Afterwards, the Catholic priest in 1579 published the first Tamil book and later the first Malayalam book was printed in 1713. After printing the first books, 
it's not only the portuguese people who brought the printing knowledge to india who brought the entire regional language to be printed and make them to be stabilized but it was the dutch people also who did their major contribution in 1710 by bringing 32 tamil books into existence with the contribution of the dutch people so that's so dutch people also contributed on a larger scale for the development of the regional languages and getting the idea of printing into india in 1780 when james augustus hickey became the main uh, editor of uh, bengal gazette he started to write a newspaper magazine which is open to all and free from all pressures in his open magazines he always used to question the atrocities of the britishers wrote an articles openly about the slave trade and also widely gave publicity about the gossips which are being rumored around the company officials of england so with this the then governor general warren hastings was very unhappy with the attitude and the behavior of uh, hickey so he developed the state sponsored newspapers or state favored newspapers and to get some kind of counter for the hickey's newspapers that is the bengal gazette so actually the bengal gazette was been brought into existence by gangadhar bhattacharya who was a very close friend of raja ramohan roy so that's how printing came to india india and the world of printing got connected from the age of manuscripts to the age of modern technology where we have the bengal gazette coming into existence the journey from 1st century 2nd century ad to the modern period of 19th century ad where it has been a great and drastic changes have been happening in the entire religious reforms and public debates how did india reach to a place where the religious reforms are being asked by many of them at the same time how did the concept of public debates come into india if you look at the picture in the past during the modern period starting we were in a condition where there was a severe criticism towards the existing laws of the hinduism when it comes to the sati system when it comes to the child female infanticide or when it comes to the uh, widows immorality and all these things are being criticized severely and these are being the basic things like widow immolation monotheism priesthood adultery all these things are being re- seriously controversial issues in the hindu society so many of the social reformers started to criticize them and they want to reform the existing old uh, superstitious beliefs into modern spiritual thoughts which can imbibe human awakening in all the religious aspects so that's how criticism has been a major part from that they want to have a greater reforms in the existing religious pattern and the culture so this gave a wide scope for debates in favor of the reforms and in against of the reforms in favor of the reforms and in against of the reforms we started to have two larger groups the hindus those who are staunch supporters of the old system of uh, hinduism started to counter the reformers saying that this is illegal and these people are talking against the interest of the god they are going against the will of the god but finally this debates are been kicked off and as we all know that printing has been in a very large scale available at very less cost so the printing has been initiated in india we have seen in the previous chapter the newspapers were also started to come in so the debates were not done on only one place it has been done in large places and also in print so once the debates have been in printed it started to reach to large number of people after reaching to large number of people large number of opinions started to come up so it indirectly started to connected all the like minded people together on one side and also the all the opposite minded people also together on the other side so that's how the debate became very large so the debates when it became public and printed this has brought the time of the controversies 
in the time of the controversies we can see the controversies can be broadly categorized into social controversies and the religious controversies when we talk about the issues which are being read out in the society during that period widow comes under the category of social widow immolation monotheism comes under the category of religion priesthood religion adultery social so the reforms which are to be brought are a combination of social and religious reforms so a society has to get updated not only in the societal aspects but also in the religious aspects that's what the reformers want from the modern ideology so this ideology started to be a serious deadlock between the communities of indian society later on if you see the society got further redivided into two major groups one is the supporters of uh, reformers the other one is the opponents of the reformers one is like raja raham ramohan roy in 1821 started to publish the modern ideology in the book called uh, sambandh kaumudi he started to release a magazine called sambandh kaumudi in 1821 his views are modern he want to be a reformer he want to reform the social and the religious whatever the deadlocks or superstitious beliefs are there without any evidences that are being questioned seriously by raja ramohan roy which are inhuman in nature but counter to this the hindu orthodox society also released a counter newspaper called samachar chandrika This Samachar Chandrika has been published in 1822. So it clearly reveals for us that in 1821, when Raja Ram Mohan Roy published, counter to this one was published in the favor of all the uh, so-called reforms which are required. They are asking what is the necessity to have a requirement or reforms on the name of Samachar Chandrika in 1822, so that they can have their own supporters. they can educate the people that there is no need to have any kind of reforms which are required by the time now and later when we talk about the other newspapers which came into existence we can see that the persian newspapers two newspapers of persian came into existence one is jam ai jahan nama the second one is samshul akbar these two started to be given in the persian language because in the northern part of india we have the influence of persian traders coming and doing trade for many centuries that's why persia has been one of the major language spoken in north india and the next moving on to the gujarati language in gujarati language we have one more newspaper coming up that is bombay samachar so bombay samachar has been published in gujarati language and later the muslims those who are scared looking at the developments of the colonial period and these controversies which are coming up against the religion and they started to get afraid and in order to save their religion under falling off its prestige and its importance the ulema the religious guru started to write or translate the holy scriptures into persian language and also the newspapers and also to publish the tracts the tracts which are required for the muslims to follow in the islam community by pu- publishing them in the persian language ulema started to do their major contribution and then they have established the dioband seminar or seminary this dioband seminary is established in 1867 its main purpose is to issue fatwas to the people fatwas are not issued in 1 2 or 10 they were issued in thousands in order to get people to understand what the knowledge is because in this metropolitan society or what we call the mixed society during that period where hindus are being asked for reformation of their laws so muslims want to have their hold on their own community so they started to preach what are the ways that we need to behave when we are in a multi religious society and how to safeguard yourself from the influence of the other religions later hindus started to encourage the books which make hinduism popular the first attempt was made by writing 
Ramacharita Manas of Tulasidas, written around 16th century, got to be published in 1810 uh, from Kolkata. And later we have 1880, Naval Kishore Press coming up and reliable and also reliable to a very large extent. So now, after the press has developed, so now we have just discussed that initially there were two groups criticizing the existing religion and some people supporting the existing religion. Those who are criticizing the old monotonous systems or rules which are practiced, which are inhuman, that has to be reformed. That is the main motto of the social reformers. So this triggered for a debate that too in public, not only in oral but also in print because of the development of the newspapers. This printing at the time of the controversies have been developed that can be categorized into social controversies and religious controversies or social reforms and religious reforms. The social reforms come under the category like widow immolation and adultery well as the monotheism and priesthood come under the category of religious reformers requirements. So in order to educate the people, in order to make the people to understand what is the necessity to have the changes or to reform the existing laws, Raja Ram Mohan Rai in 1821 published a magazine called Samband Kaumudi. Samband Kaumudi. So in order to counter this one and in order to educate the other Hindus and not to allow Hindus to get fall into the ideology that reformation is required in Hinduism also. So Hindu orthodoxy society started to publish Samachar Chandrika in 1822. Not only this, many other newspapers came into existence starting from Persian, Gujarati and also the other languages. So the first Persian paper was Jamayai Jahan Nama and Samsul Akbara, second one. Well as the Gujarati one is Bombay Samachar. Well in the Ulemas, they have scriptured the holy scriptures and they are scared of the colonial government that may destroy the existing uh, integrity and unity of the Muslims also and they may force the Muslims also to go towards reformation. So they started to turn the Urdu into Persian and the normal Urdu language so that they can be read by a large number of people in the form of newspaper articles, in the form of tracts and everything. They purposefully established Diyoband Seminary in 1867 through which fatwas are being released and these fatwas are mainly to uh, guide the people when they are in a multi-religious society without falling into influence of the any other religion. And Hindus started to develop their own theme by getting some more books which, which enhance the speciality of Hinduism like Ramacharita Manas written by Tulsi Das and uh, in 1880 Naval Kishore Press brought some more editions and this all printing has developed the people, their ideology, their thought process, their way of thinking, their way of getting connected to the people. So earlier, people were not able to understand what is the development or what is modernization. But because of the printing, people are able to get connected to large number of people. The different ideologies are widespread so that you can decide which one is right and which one is wrong. It is not always right to say that printing has brought certain revolutions. but Printing has brought change in the mindset of the people. And not only this, when we move aside from these uh, news issues and the hot debates, when we go on to the religious side, the printing has brought many religious people come together of the same religion. Because once the books are printed in which the simple language has been used to understand the uh, religious scriptures, they are spread out individually as well as read out in a large where crowd or mass gathering has happened in order to make them to understand what is actually in the holy scripture books like Ramayana, Mahabharata, Bhagavad Gita and all these books, these all has added and brought the people together under one side and at the same time brought a clear division of people in the different ideologies. But finally, printing has always added for the development of human societies on a larger scale. Now let us move towards the new forms of publications. The new forms of publications, as we all know that printing has reached to excel. It has given a new appetite of writing. Initially, it was written only about the incidents. Later, people started to write about their lives, 
about their experiences about the atrocities which are happening about the problems what they are facing about the societies what they are seeing and later on after slowly development on from the paper and the views of the people it moved on to the indian context of indian traditional system indian culture indian nature indian religious system all these things started to be written on a wide range and people started to read it on a very larger scale so that's how it has given a very good indian form of styles which started to go on into the people on a larger scale after the painters like when these people started to write these things and the printing press has become a major initiative employment opportunity for many people especially the wooden people wooden block people who have used to have work with the printing used to be stationed near the printing press so they were employed there so that's how they got large employments and the employment also when been created with the development of printing and after this painting has become a major development during this period raja ravi verma's pictures are been for large masses where these pictures are been symbol or symbolized for the modern day gods so that's how people started to get connected with the modern pictures which were of the raja ravi verma by 1870s and 1880s and later the cheap prints after moving from the costly prints of raja ravi verma uh, the gods pictures the images the idols and all later they started to have cheap printings of uh, calendars symbols astrology all these things they started to get it on the cheap prints and later in 1870s the caricature and the cartoons are been introduced in the indian newspapers after the caricature and the cartoons are been introduced in the indian newspapers the people started to understand this one on a very deliberately manner because the caricatures and the cartoons are been initially given to focus on the rule which was going on against the people the britishers rule has been questioned by using cartoons and the caricatures now moving on to women and print how did the women's life and how did they enter into the printing sector now let us see here the lives and the feelings of women are been extensively and widely written in all the books slowly and slowly the understanding of women's life women culture women pattern women how is she being restricted how is she being tortured all these things have come into scene and picture and once they were printed and available in large people started to question them so women education has been a serious concern during that period so most of the liberal husbands who are very friendly and who can understand the modern ideology and who have the feeling of equality towards the men and women those people started to encourage their wives and their children especially women children to have home based schooling knowledge so in this home based schooling knowledge the girls and the women can know what is actually the knowledge is what are the vedas what are the scriptures what is the understanding of life and all these things if they know education they can read any books this point has been a difficult point for them to understand for the hindu orthodox people as well as for the muslim orthodox communities because the conservatives of hinduism feel that if the women are getting educated they would read all the books that would make them their daughters to become widows that was a superstitious belief which they used to believe like that and they never encouraged any of their girl child to get educated and at the same time when it comes to the muslims the muslims used to get afraid and scared that in case if woman is getting educated she would study all the other books of literature in which she may understand what is the process of the family intercourse and all these things so it may affect the entire family that may make her to divert from the existing religious patterns so they always forced her to read only the arabic language even though she doesn't know that one she has to read that one because she does not understand this anything that's how the people of orthodox hindus and the orthodox muslim community people used to block the education for the girl child or the women for a very long period of time in the medieval period or in the early phase of the modern period later raj rash 
Sundari Devi, who has studied secretly the knowledge of writing and reading, and she wrote in her own autobiography called Amar Jiban. Amar Jiban was the first Bengali book written by women in 1876. This was the first official autobiography written by her own self in 1876. In 1860s, we have Kailash Bashni Devi. Kailash Bashni Devi. She also has written one more book encouraging what are the atrocities that are happening against women. She brought into light all the possibilities. So with this, the growth of literature not only in the local languages, in Madras, in Tamil language, in Punjabi language, in the Bengali language, all these languages finally brought into the point the discussion of the issues like what is women education? How can women education be blocked because of the superstitious beliefs? What about the widow remarriage system? Why widows are being treated like that? And these all efforts are started to be the discussion points and the debate issues for a very larger period of time. Then Ram Chadda. Ram Chadda wrote a book called Istri Dharam Vichar. This Istri Dharam Vichar has been a famous book in the Punjabi language which has been sold to many people and these people in order to avoid the people to learn or especially the women to learn language though they have the passion to learn language they started to give some books like uh, Batala. These Batala books are taken by the peddlers and these books are given for the women to read during their leisure time. That's how the women education has been blocked for many centuries. Initially, many books have come up with the growth of printing technology and knowledge, lives and feelings of women are expressed widely in the books and these are being spread to all corners. But later, the liberal husbands understood that unless and until women is educated, we cannot have proper education and family system could not survive properly, the societies would not develop properly. So the liberal husbands started to initiate to give for them home based schooling so that they can learn the language, literature and understand the society properly. But the conservative Hindus and Muslims blocked the education saying with some blind superstitious beliefs. Hinduism is considered that if a girl is educated, she would remain as a widow. So that is the reason why most of the women are not encouraged to get educated during this period. And when it comes to Muslims, Muslims never encourage any of their girls so that she may be getting the knowledge to read all the other chapters of the uh, Muslim books. So Quran and all. So she may question the atrocities which are happening against her. So they want to stop this kind of growth in the woman knowledge. So they always forced her to read the Arabic language which she doesn't know also and she can't understand anything. That's how she can spend her time in learning that one and understanding that one. That's how they used to divert the issue. So the first book which was written as an autobiography by a woman in Bengali was Raj Sundari Devi. Uh, Amar Jiban was the name of the book. It was written in 1876. Next, in 1860s, one more book was written by Kailash Bashni Devi. This also in Bengali only. Later on, the serious issues of topics became in Madras or in Punjab or in the, all the vernacular languages. That is, why is women education being blocked? What are the major reasons for not supporting women education? The reforms have to be start to get women education. And also, widow remarriages, why the widows are treated uh, very uh, insulting manner that's all the things has to be the serious concerns of the society by that time as for the growth of understanding so Rama Chadda who has written a book called uh, Istri Dharam Vichar he also used to spread the views like how a woman should be what are the ideas that women has to follow so now they want to make women to understand that to be a very good woman what are the ideas that has to be followed what are the uh, Vichar means what are the views that has to be taken and all these things. In the same way, when women are free, they are encouraged to read the books like uh, Batala, which were taken by the peddlers who encourage the women to read during their free time to be an ideal woman. And later, uh, coming on to the print and to the poor sections of the community of the people, moving aside from the women to the poor categories of people. Uh, public libraries have been catering all the requirements of the poor people in most of the parts of the Madras. Madras has been one of the main places 
which gave chance for most of the people to get educated by having public libraries and acquiring a public libraries are found only in cities and towns and at times in villages where having a library is a prestigious concept for many of the people who stay in the village so that's how madras has started to acquire this knowledge of education to all the people by having these uh, libraries the public libraries which are viable and open to more number of people larger public the famous books which i have written in order to bring awareness to the people was jyotiba phule who raised his first voice against the social atrocities of the caste system racial discrimination that is gulam giri in 1871 he tried detailedly described what is actually happening in the society and he want to create awareness to the people that there is no difference between human to human it is only the man made differences it's not by the god made differences these all things he started to enlighten it and he also told how seriously the people are being exploited on the name of the caste system and then the kashi babas written book called choti aur bade ka sawal in 1938 in this also we can find how the exploitation has been happening between the same human beings in the name of the caste religion and all that's how slowly and started on a steadily basis the awareness towards the spirit of nationalism the understanding of the growth of the social atrocities or reforms which are required in the field of social and also in the religious fields and also to eradicate untouchability to end the caste discrimination all these things one by one started to come in because of the growth of the printing culture the ideas started to spread and flow in the entire market of north and south of india that's how the message of nationalism has to come in so once the message of nationalism has to come in means it has to evaporate all the uh, boundaries or the obstacles which are not allowing the indians to become united so the message of nationalism started to spread slowly and steadily in the basis of uh, the knowledge or backdrop of development of moving on to the print and the censorship so as we have seen printing started to reach its excel by circulating all the views all the ideologies starting from the different views of the people different books printed in the earlier editions women and its views religious feelings religious awakening reformers putting their views then we have the questioning of social atrocities caste discrimination uh, worker and owner discrimination workers are made to work for very long hours these all are been uh, part and parcel of the printing culture because the issues are been not only debated and left off these issues are been in print and debated on a very larger scale that's how the printing started to reach to very large extent but the most fundamental point what we need to understand here is that in 1798 english east india company though english east india company was knowing the knowledge that printing has been going on in a very large scale in india but they never were concerned about the idea of having censorship that too they came to consider to have censorship only after they found that the some of the englishmen who were questioning the moves and the attitudes of some of the company officials so the company was worried that if these people are raising the voice against our own company officials this may be caught by the opposition members in the british parliament and they may raise their voices against the company that's how the first restrictions were laid on englishmen by the english east india company this was a very strange point later in 1820s the supreme calcutta supreme court has passed certain rules and restrictions on the printing media so once the rules and restrictions are been passed the british officials continued them and encouraged the pro british newspapers so that which will praise the legacy of the british rule and later in 1835 urgent petition came from the local and the vernacular newspapers asking about the threat of their newspapers so general governor general bentick revised the press laws with official name called thomas macale he brought 
again after detailed study brought back the laws which were earlier giving freedom for the printers to print according to their views especially for newspapers but after the 1857 first war of independence or the revolt of independence the people and the british started to take the issues very seriously in 1878 the vernacular press act was passed on the guidelines of the irish laws these vernacular act laws are forbidding the people to publish anything without the knowledge of the government or the officials in case if it is threatening to the authority or provoking anything against the government that can be stopped or blocked by the government according to this law this has been one of the key reasons why the revolutions became larger and wider that is for example when the punjab revolution happened in 1907 where it was crushed off in a very hard manner by the british officials in a sympathetic attitude bal gangadhar tilak wrote in his newspaper kesari expressing his uh, sorrowful nature towards the way it happened and the way the people are treated so bal gangadhar tilak was warned and this warning also caused that he was imprisoned for uh, this act in 1908 with the imprisonment of bal gangadhar tilak the issue became very large scaling of protests against all corners of india that's how the print and the censorship also contributed for the growth of nationalism spirit in india let us see the in detail in 1798 english east india companies were not at all worried or bothered to have the restrictions or censorship but when the englishmen started to make certain satirical jokes and started to question the attitudes of some of the englishmen then english east india company seriously restricted and put censorship on the same englishmen who were writing the news later in 1820s for the first time kolkata supreme court has advised and passed certain regulations for the newspapers in 1835 with the growing demand of the vernacular newspapers and the local newspapers the governor general of that time general bendick has asked thomas macale to reformulate the existing press laws so thomas macale brought the previous laws into existence by doing some minor changes that's how the laws have been again replaced so to get the freedom but after the 1857 revolt the britishers were very serious and they brought the act called 1878 vernacular act on the guidelines of the irish act according to this act they shall warn the person who is writing anything against the interest of the britishers and also it can cause an imprisonment for them so that's how the first one punjab revolution which was done and it was crushed by the britishers in 1907 uh, bal gangadhar tilak in his in a magazine called kesari expressed this one with a sort of latitude with this bal gangadhar tilak was brought into imprisonment in 1908 which triggered the protest on a very large scale in the entire nation that's how the print and the censorship also contributed for the growth of the spirit of nationalism among the diverse the divided now today we are going to discuss about a astonishing fact that is print culture and the modern world so what is so astonishing about the print culture and the modern world see today we find around us everywhere we find printed matter everywhere around us we see the advertisements we look at the magazines we look at the books we read the newspapers we look at the library collection we always look at the calendars circulars notices government orders all these things are on printed official matters so whatever we look it is on the blue and black so whatever we find the written information that all is found there so now we all forgot that what is a world before these all are present do we have a world which is present without a printed matter at yes we have a world which has a printed matter not at all printed which means like there was an existing period of time when there was no printing machine at all when there was no writing at all when there was no official record maintenance at all then how did the people survive during that period how did the transformation happened from the non printed world to the printed world 
how did the time pass went on how did the time went on how did the process went on so now we need to learn in this chapter how the printing developed and as i told you before astonishing fact is that generally we discover many things transforming from west to east getting knowledge from the west to east but for the first time we here discuss that printing has been discussed in the eastern part of asia was been carried over to the west who were the first people to discover printing how did the printing got transformed the knowledge from west towards sorry from the east to the west till now from west to east is a common travel journey but for the first time we find like facts which where eastern people know this one before far earlier than the west some of the travelers who came to study about the east discovered this one carried this knowledge back to the west from there it started spreading in the entire west so that's how printing has got a special place in the history so now we are going to learn how did the printing develop or what is the history of printing what was there prior to the history of printing how did people get the idea of the knowledge of printing these all the things can be answered after you go through this unit if you like this video please give a thumbs up please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on cbse syllabus